Dung beetles, dung piles, and dung balls. Oh my. After spending a year away from Don't Starve Hamlet guides, a fact that I still cannot grasp myself, I think it's time we returned in force, as there's still a lot of crap to talk about, literally in this case. So from the fastest resource farms around, to a number of hidden treasures among the refuse, let us see why letting these bugs on the loose could prove fruitful. Oh. And stinky, but we'll get to that. For now, we best know where to find all this dang dung deposits. Yes, dung piles and thus dung beetles absolutely litter the wild plains and rainforests of Don't Starve Hamlet here, so finding them should not be a problem. And that goes for all the islands, mind. These two biomes are by and large the main stretches of land, with multiple branches to them to boot, so availability isn't really the question here. It's renewability. Because like most of Don't Starve Hamlet, it is entirely possible to accidentally deplete dung beetles. However, for now, just note that every dung pile you see is going to be home to a single beetle. A skittish beetle at that, as these guys roll away from just about everything and usually end up knocking themselves off their dung balls in the process. Now, if left enough alone, they will hop right back on the nearest one. But it should come as no surprise that these moments are also one of the best times to kill these beetles for guaranteed monster meat and a 50% chance at a piece of chitin. And their dung ball, I suppose, but more on that soon. As you should note now, how dung beetles also sleep at night, making for really easy murderings too. Wherever the choice in dealing with them is, however, note that all dung piles will respawn their dung beetles in just over two and a half minutes, making for some super fast and potentially efficient resource farms, especially for Don't Starve Hamlet exclusively. For you see, all dung balls drop three items from a pool of basic resources, with a couple extra stuff thrown into the mix like seeds and lost idols for money, and while that doesn't sound all that enticing, anyone who has played Hamlet is quite aware with how stingy it is on the mineral sides of things at the end of the day, so take advantage. Be mindful though, if you were to destroy a dung beetle's dung ball, and not the dung beetle itself alongside it, they will head towards the nearest dung pile and destroy it to make a new dung pile for themselves, even if it's not their own. And why care about such a thing as we're really just losing a single beetle spawn? Well, because the one and only way to renew dung piles in Don't Starve Hamlet, and thus dung beetles, and thus dung balls, is through none other than the BFB. Be it a natural flyover, or otherwise. The big frickin' bird should drop two to three dung piles per spawn. However, I have noticed that she has a bit of a cooldown with her foul ball movements. And I mean, who doesn't, am I right? Just don't go spam in the bird whistle thinking you're gonna create an entire biome filled with crap is all. But speaking of, what can this special crap do for us? Is their loot better than that of the dung balls that come out of them? No. No, it's not actually. In fact, given their renewability issues, I wouldn't even bother touching these things at all. Especially when digging through them also happens to drain your sanity by 10 points each and every time if you're not using a shovel. If you're Wormwood, on the other hand, you actually gain 10 sanity per each harvest of one of these dunk piles, which is actually great fun and could be advantageous. But no, no, no. Stick to farming the infinite dung balls and dung beetles that come out of them and leave the piles alone for the most part. Unless you really need manure for whatever reason. But speaking of loot, and given the fact that this is a mob guy technically, what can chitin that drops directly from these dung beetles do for us? Well, we've got the matte mask and suit, which are essentially the equivalents of what they're made of in terms of armor. However, note that not only will the full get up render all mats neutral to us, but how we can also repair the matte suit with the sewing kit for sustained protection. Chitin also goes into the weevil mantle if you've got the carapaces pieces, which can also serve as an armor, but it's mostly tied to preventing humid seasons fog at the end of the day. And lastly, Chitin can be endless 
endlessly sold to collector pigs on the palace island for three oinks each trade, which is very likely your best bet with them. In short, dung beetles lead to faster and better mineral resource farms and money. Two things that honestly make Hamlet go round pretty much. But before we pop a squat or roll away ourselves, two last notes. Quote unquote, homeless dunk beetles are technically a thing I suppose if they're scared far enough away from both their dunk balls and dunk piles. However, they are all more than comfortable in taking and destroying ones that are not theirs. So I would fully anticipate them getting back on a roll eventually if you don't deal with them immediately as they will roam freely. But finally, dung balls are highly maneuverable themselves when beetles are not on them. So do with this as you please. And there you have it everyone. Our first official and noteworthy Don't Starve Hamlet guide in over a year if you can believe it. All about the unique crap that calls it home. And like most mechanics and mobs in this DLC, dung beetles, and I suppose everything that surrounds them, are pretty neat yet limited little creatures with a very exclusive role to play. But with it all being so darn unique, especially compared to the aging Don't Starve Together experience I gotta say, I am very happy happy to be back with a familiar but almost refreshing change of pace. I hope you are too. Let me know what you'd like covered moving forward, and I'll see you in the next one, folks. Bye-bye.